Welcome to Married MBA Today. I'm your host, Bryce Reynolds Bach, and I'm joined by some other MBA students, and we're here to talk about the uh, Adobe Web Analytics competition. If you guys want to just introduce yourselves. I'm Tyler Ruby, second year MBA. Ryan Terry, second year MBA. And Jared Ferguson, also a second year. So we're just going to dive right in and uh, talk about the competition. And so would one of you mind just setting up what is the competition and yeah. Where does it start? Yeah, I'll take that. So each year, Adobe hosts a competition that enables students to have access to Adobe products to analyze one of Adobe's customers' websites. So this year, um, they gave us access to one of Comcast's website. It was Xfinity TV. And we get to use one of Adobe's premier products on the digital marketing side, which is Site Catalyst. And they opened it up. They opened it up to 12 schools this year, and I think there was about 160 total submissions from around the country. It's real exciting. I know I use Xfinity TV for myself, so maybe I'll get to see some of the changes from the competition, perhaps. Yeah, if you use the website, I don't think a lot of people use the website. We're all Comcast subscribers as well, but none of us had actually used the website. So, but it's pretty cool. Check it out. Yeah. So let's see. I mean, some other things I know. It's so it started at BYU, right? Kind of, it's came from Omniture through Adobe. Now, um, I think uh, it was hosted at their new building, right? Right. That's right. So it starts um, on campus. They kind of present the competition, and there's a lot of people that show up kind of to that initial meeting. But a lot of people kind of trickle out after a while. Uh, they give you a one-hour tutorial on the product, which you need way more time than that, but. And then they give you two weeks to come up with some recommendations and a story to kind of go along with that. And um, after that, they kind of move on a few of the select teams to the semifinal round, where you present in, on campus at BYU. And after that, they further select uh, just six teams to go to the final round. And we had teams from various schools, BYU, Cal Berkeley, Texas. Berkeley. I know we had New York, uh, NYU, some Northwestern, MIT. Right. I mean, some great schools involved and excited. So kind of before we get into the actual competition, why don't you guys tell me about your team? How did you, how did you decide, how did you put your team together and know that you wanted to get involved in the competition? Yeah, so Tyler and I actually did the competition last year. Okay. And uh, our third team member was Jared. And he since graduated and moved on. And so we knew we needed another Jared. Yeah. So we looked far and wide. And we had a friend here, Jared Ferguson, just fit, fit like a glove. Worked out for you then? It worked out for me. There, there were at least multiple Jareds to choose from, right, guys? No? I think not so much. Right. So what about, uh, what about your team name? Uh, team name. So I'll take that one. Uh, Xfinity TVs where. Um, Comcast subscribers can lo log in and watch TV shows or movies, and so we wanted to pick a name along with that theme. We love comedy, and so we decided to, we actually flirted with the titles of several popular TV shows and ended up selecting Team Community. Um, we were a fan of that, and we liked the double meaning that, um, well, first of all, we liked the show, and then we liked the idea of a community, we're a team, and, there, and we actually ended up using that theme throughout our presentation. Um, we use that story and mentioned a lot of the characters to kind of spice up our presentation and make it interesting when we present it to the judges. So. We're really glad that we used the, the name community because it, it gave us something to kind of build off of as we, as we presented. And mind you, we, we, we went fourth uh, in the final round. So there were three presentations before and the competition is very data driven. So, so you kind of get tired of, of hearing about data, and then we, we stepped on stage with, with our, our funny picture, you know, intro, introduction to our team, and then we would use characters from the TV show to, you know, to just thread throughout our presentation, and it really just made data more digestible. Great, yeah, certainly a part of the presentation is not just your data, but also how you present it. Probably a big part of your, yeah, big part of your success. Um, so kind of looking at that, um, you know, there's 160 teams that compete, and you know, you're given an hour tutorial. You got two weeks to put together a presentation. Um, you know, you guys had experience in the analytics software, but many teams don't. It's, I know it's not required. 
Uh, what strategies would you have? What strategies did you, uh, I mean, what were your strategies going into the competition? We set up um, a schedule for ourselves and, and with, with school obligations, with our family obligations, the only times that coordinated with all of us was at nine o'clock at night. So we planned on working almost every single night during, that, during the competition, 9 p.m. till midnight. So we put in a lot of time and oftentimes that midnight was pushed till 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. because we were about to grasp onto something and we wanted to make, uh, make sure that we, we carried that energy forward and, 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 uh, and fully analyzed all of the, the data that we had and that we were running with before we, before we stopped that evening. But we had quite a few nights that were late nights. Yeah, and interesting enough, the Tanner building closes at midnight, so we got to know a bunch of the security people who came in and tried to kick us out. But we actually used the NBA lounge. It's a key-locked door. We'd go in there, sneak in there, turn the lights off, and pretend nobody was there until the security guards left. But hopefully we don't get in trouble for that. But it worked out for us. I would just add one thing to the strategy is our presentation, we spent a lot of time on our slides as well as our story. And one thing that was really important to all of us was look and feel. So we designed our, our presentation from scratch. Ryan designed some nice graphics that we used. And all of us are really nitpicky about the quality of the, the slideshow that we created. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up having a really quality product, look and feel wise. And then beyond that, we really focused on the a logical flow throughout the presentation. So the strategy we followed is, let's tell the judges what we're going to tell them in the introduction. Let's tell them. And then in the conclusion, we tell them what we essentially told them throughout the presentation. We followed that formula. It's an easy formula, but it worked really well for us. Uh, I'd say it worked really well. I think I have some proof here of uh, how well it worked out for you guys. We wanna, so uh, I know we're blocking you guys off, but uh, this probably worked out really well for you guys. First place, BYU. Really excited. I know we didn't take place last year, but uh, we've done really well in, in all the previous years of the competition. Um, we're kind of finishing up. Um, so as, as we're closing, what would some advice for next year students? Say all three of you are second year students, so you won't be doing this competition again. So we'd really love to see BYU uh, take first place. And um, I know BYU had two teams in the competition this year, so there's potential for you know, first and second if we could. What advice do you have for those students? So one thing to keep in mind is that this is an Adobe competition. So they want to see how well you use their tools. And, and Ryan and I last year we competed and we, and we were able to take fourth in the finals. Um, but one thing that we did last year is we used a lot of data outside of Site Catalyst. And this year we worked really, really hard to make sure that we were staying within the data provided in Site Catalyst. And we, we'd go get external data just to add a little bit extra to our analysis. But I say um, it's really important to make sure that, that you're only considering the, the data within Site Catalyst to make your recommendations. Any, any other advice from you guys? My advice is just uh, to do it, participate. Um, there's the days of kind of launching a marketing campaign and not really measuring it anymore are kind of over. I think if, if you're interested in working in the tech industry, this gives you a really valuable tool that you can put on your resume. And it gives you some kind of thought process behind uh, what, what is successful, what's not successful in a business case. So my advice is just participate. That's great. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> advice I'd give to BYU students is you need to not only come up with solid recommendations, but you need to use the data with Insight Catalyst to quantify the impact of that data. That's one thing we did this year that I think separated us from a lot of the teams. So we had solid recommendations, but we told Comcast exactly how big of impact to the key performance indicators that those recommendations would have. And the second piece of advice that I'd give is set your time expectations up front. Last year, I got on a team and you know we didn't put in nearly enough time to actually develop a nice piece of or develop a nice story and presentation. And this year at the very outset of the project, we decided we were in this competition to win and we're gonna put whatever time necessary to get the job done. It ended up being really challenging. We had some late nights, um, we had some hard times. 
as a team, but we ended up coming out on top, was, which was extremely rewarding. So just set the precedence early. Are you in this to win, or are you just going to maybe go easy and learn the tools a little bit and put it on your resume? But if you want to win, you need to set those time expectations up front. One more thing to add, if I may, um, is that we, did, we made sure that all of the information that we presented tied directly back to their KPIs. So that way, that way the judges saw clearly that the information that we were presenting was, was answering exactly what Comcast, the client, was looking for. So we tied it directly to the KPIs and we also tied it to their burning questions. We just made it extremely clear that, that that's what we were doing. So that way they didn't have to make that connection or maybe overlook some of the things that we had discovered for them. And real quick, just so the audience is aware, a KPI is a key performance indicator in web analytics jargon. And um, Comcast gave us, I think, five or six key performance indicators, which are metrics that are measurable that they want you to essentially improve. And so we had those KPIs on the outset of the project, as well as the burning questions that Tyler mentioned. And everything we did was tied directly to improving those KPIs and staying within that scope. Great. And guys, thanks for joining, uh, being on the show. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again.